Okay, this is just a quick video I'm doing where what I'm going to show you how to do is to basically become the master of the network graph on a GitHub project. Because you've probably looked at some GitHub projects and seen the way when you go into the um, the forks and you see that big graph with all those names on it and it's, you know, well, different, yeah, different users on it from where they forked it and put their own commits in. But basically, if you want to, you can actually become the master of the graph where it's just you. Sometimes you can be the only one on there if, if you pull all the right commits. And the strange thing about the way they've done it is it affects the graph on like everyone's projects as well. But I know what I'm saying sounds a bit, sounds a bit crazy. But anyway, the best thing I can do is just give you a demonstration. So basically, the project I'm going to be doing this on is called uh, Spreed WebRTC. So if we just do a quick, just do a search for it, and then you'll see it's got this GitHub page. And basically, if we go to the page, um, you'll see, you can see the project, it's got like the releases, all the commits, and the... Yes, your last commit was 13th of April. So now if we go to the fork and, and the, which shows the network graph, basically on here, what you see is sort of a crazy mess with all the people who've sort of forked the project and, um, made commits in their version of, or in their repository. So at the moment, you see there's a few names here on the left. And so these are the ones who've actually done some commits and when you look at the top of the graph you can see that the there was a commit done by the sort of the company that um was it struck structure and the last entry they have in is this one called release 0 0.29 but then when we look down you notice that there's other people who've done work as well so like see this guy's done quite a bit and there's there are other um additions by sort of various other programmers but basically those additions are all in different um yeah basically they're in different um uh, repositories so what we're going to do then basically is to get um some of the some of these fixes and basically put them together and so the way we do that is by pulling the um yeah pulling the various um uh, changes in so the the one hard thing about this is working out which ones are actually worth pulling in and you kind of have to look and see what they um you know each one they've done and so if it looks as if it's something useful because some of them don't really do you know anything that w would really make any difference to but then there's others which could actually they can have something useful and so Yeah, so, so you can, all right, so what I'm going to do is basically show you how to choose the commits that you want and to basically, um, merge them into your own, um, copy of the repository. So first things first is to just quickly go through and see which ones seem reasonable. So yeah, we could, could go with that one. We don't care about system, system D. So, you know what Travis is. Need that, need that. Okay, that's a useful one. So we choose that one. Okay, we want to have Oh, 
right, so we want, yeah, this one seems reasonable. We choose that one. Okay, yeah, this looks good. So as you can see, each one of these is just, they've just left it dangling. So if you want to, basically you don't have to sit and wait for someone else to do it. That's one good thing about, um, you might take that one. That. Okay, and I found out the hard way that basically this one you you can't really merge it because he's done so many changes that if you do try to merge it, it just basically takes just takes too much effort. Yeah, but this, this one's worth it. And finally, yeah, we take this one as well. So these are, that's why it comes in handy when they actually use proper names in the commits because then you can have a reasonable chance of knowing if that commit is actually, uh, is, is, is actually worth uh, taking or not. So let me just see, I think that should do for now. Um, I don't think I went for any other ones because usually if it's too old, it's not really worth it. All right, so now we've got these ones we've selected up here. These are the ones we want to make. We want to merge into our, our own copies. So the way we do that is in the original, um, so basically you have to log into Make sure you're logged into GitHub and that you, your user shows up, you know, and you can see your username, etc. And then if you click on where it says fork, what it does is it makes a copy of the, um, of the repository. And so now when you see here, see, so my name's, name of my, um, well, account is MacPC's own and and now I have the Spreed Web RTC and it's forked from the Structurug one. So if you go to fork and look on the network chart, you'll see that, um, yeah, it's a bit confusing because what happens, you now have all of the commits from Structurug. So it, it seems like you've done all this work, but if you actually put your mouse on each one, you'll notice you can see who actually did the commits. Uh, but it's because this is now in your your account, so your name appears here. But if you go back, at, well, first things first, I'll, what I need to do is to make a copy of this now. So I need to bring it to the local machine. So basically we can clone it from here and so if you copy that. Okay, so now I have my local copy of that repository. And, um, so if you go back to the original one, and then we go on to the, um, to the network graph. So you'll see it's back, it's, it's just like how it was before. And notice my account doesn't appear at the side because I haven't done any changes yet. And so it's usually, it's the same sort of, sort of mess like we had before and going to the end. So that, so that seems, okay, so that seems all right now. So if we now go back to, go back to my version 
Right, and so, now before you do this, another thing that can happen when you're doing merges is that sometimes you get conflicts and you have to fix those conflicts. And so you need to have a program which is set up to actually do that. And so the one that I'm using is called meld. So if I just type meld in the command line, this program comes up. And basically this is what I use for, um, uh, for, for basically, um, any sort of, um, if you've got two sets of programs, you want to create a, a, a sort of merge them together, then this, this is, I mean, it's quite a good program for doing it. So, so we, we've, um, cloned the, um, screed web RTC. So if we change into the directory. Uh, so once we're in here, what we need to do is to check out that, um, 0 0.29 version, which is the latest one. And so basically we just do a checkout of that. And so now we've, in our local, um, command line here, I've switched over to that 0 0.29 release. So now comes the task of actually merging the different, um, those different ones I've chosen in to the, um, this current, uh, cloned repository that I have at the moment. So the way we do that now is each of these tabs, if you go into, so, so you go into each one that I've um, made a tab of, and then here, where it shows you the this little name, which is beside this little symbol, this is the actual branch where the, the commit was made. And so what you need is we have to pull this, this, branch in and you have to pull the whole branch basically and the way you do that is you you basically copy this link of this name here because this name is the name of the branch itself and it's linked to the repository and so what we basically do is see so the remove disconnect is the name of the branch and then the repository is the, will always be the Spreed WebRTC if they haven't renamed it. So we pull this in and see, so that one's successful. So what we have to do is just basically type in here a message for this particular um, merge commit. So, if it, so this, what it says at the top here, if we just save this file, this is what the commit message is going to be. So I'm just using nano here, so I'll just do control O to save it and then control X and basically so that as you can see that's been merged in. So that change that he made, which is called um well yeah, remove handled ice disconnected state. So basically now this whole change that he's done along with any previous changes he's made has been merged into this branch. So now, so we can leave that one. So go to the next one. Oops. I found this is the easiest way of getting the correct name because see the name has to be right and it's easier doing it this way rather than just typing it out. Alright, see, so now this one, it couldn't actually merge it in. And so what it's saying is that you have to actually, um, uh, fix the, basically the conflict. And this is where the git merge tool comes in because this is what you use in order to fix when there's a conflict. So if I type git merge tool, it will bring up that um, mail that I had open. But what it does conveniently is it puts, so basically this, the left side, um, is the current one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, so, so the left side is what I have locally, and the middle one is is how it wants it to be merged, or how it would be merged, and then the right side is the remote one. Um, so, basically, what we ha the one that has to be changed is the middle one. So, the middle one is the one that actually gets saved into the merged um, repository. So what? We, so the green ones you can basically ignore them because, uh, as you can see, this arrow is pointing towards the remote one, which means it's already there. So we, we don't have to worry about that. This one is in the local. So yeah, again, it's pointing to the remote. So we already have this. So we can ignore that, and then it's this one that's the problem one. Because basically, with this two sets of instructions, and from when I've looked at them, it seems that the the one, the remote one, seems to be a bit more friendly in the way it the text is written. So if I merge the remote one into the local one by pressing this arrow, so we now end up with. Um, our merged um, document, and you can see the red parts are where the changes are. So not much has actually been changed, and so this middle one is is pretty much a combination of both README documents. So then, if we just save this, and then you quit, and so now we just have to commit that. Right, so yeah, so we've just merging branch update fix screen share instruction. Um, I'll leave this. I'll leave the spelling mistake in. So just do control R. So, so that's basically that one's been merged. So we go into the next one. Okay, this one's a bit more major, so let's see what happens with this. Okay, so that was a success. So there's quite a few changes in there, but he obviously changed the files which were separate for ones that the original developers have changed. And as long as the files are separate, then um, there won't be a conflict, and it it just basically Git will just move the changes in by itself automatically without you really having to do anything apart from just type this message so that the commit and, and you can see that yeah quite a few changes went in there and they were all clean in that there was no conflict with any previous code that was there and, and that can be convenient when that happens so we've done that one so this video So we pull this one out. Okay, that's fine as well. This is the edge one. Yes, I know this one works. I remember. Okay, so that's merged in. So it's convenient, this is sure 
a lot more convenient than having to create a patch and then run the patch and basically git just does it all by itself so it, it can certainly speed things up you know when you're trying to you know, look at all those kadok um, additions that went in there and basically git just did it all by itself automatically and all those changes without any having to even sort of delve into any of the files So the main thing to remember is that you have to put that space in there. And it's always the, so it's the, just to sh show you, so it's the GitHub, name of the user, and the name of the repository. And then from that link, you remove where it says compare and the forward slash, and you make sure there's a space in between. And then when you just, and then and obviously at the beginning, it's git pull. And then when you return on that, then git does all the work. Oh, so all those changes, Git did it by itself, without me having to go to patch diff or anything like that. This is the last one, so let's see. Okay, so that one's done as well. Yes, yeah, so that wasn't too much. So, there you have it. So all those changes which were done by those different um, developers have now been merged into this local repository. And it was Git that did most of the work. All I had to do was just press return on a few, edit a few links and press return. And all the patching, etc. Git just did it. Uh, by itself. So now, if we go back to the sort of uh, repository that we cloned, see nothing's changed because um, I haven't actually pushed anything yet. So now, if we go back to um, here, and so what we do now is all those changes that we made, and we could push it to another branch, but because um, well, I've done it before, so I know it actually it is okay. So, um, what what you basically do now is just to push the changes, all these changes that I've made, up to my um, to basically the branch that I have, and. Okay, so just because I haven't done this for a while, um, the previous command I just put in didn't work, so I just had to do a quick check to find out how to actually do it. So uh, basically, the at the moment I'm on the release 0 0.29, so I pushed a different branch, which obviously hadn't changed from the local one. So um, basically, I'm on release 0. Two nine. So what I have to do is make sure to set the upstream as zero two nine as well. Okay. Right. So so I've done that. So basically, it's pushed the. I think it's pushed the changes. Yeah. There we go. So. Now it's pushed those changes up to the release 0 0.29. So 0 0.29 is the one that has all those changes that I made in it. So if I go to, um, 
the network graph now, what you see suddenly, Mac PC, oh yeah, the my see suddenly there's all these lines have appeared inside of uh, my user, and when you look down, you'll notice that the users down here has actually shrunk. So some of them have actually disappeared because their lines have been taken and put into my. So basically, what happens? Anyone whose code you you merge in to your um your copy of the repository, it actually takes their line away, and so they their name drops off the side of the um the network graph. And I thought that was a bit strange the way the fact they did that. So it's like you 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 start taking over their code, and I've always found it a bit strange where you go onto one user's um, repository in the network graph, and then when you look at the commits, it's someone else who's done the commit, and I used to wonder what that meant, but now I realize what it means is that the person has merged their changes across. So so you, you might mistakenly think that they've written the code, but they haven't, because look, all I did was just typed a few lines in and now suddenly I've got all the it's like I've done all this work and when you look all the lines come across and they end right at the end here with the release that release 029 that see where I merged everything in so even though you look on the dots you can see well yeah I merged it in but the other dots you can see the names of the original users but anyone coming in would think I've suddenly just done all this work and, you know, I've been busy working on it because I've got all these lines in my user. When you saw what I did, it, it didn't actually really do much. And so that's how you can, if well, I don't know what use this actually is to do this, but you can literally sort of decimate a network graph on GitHub just by merging all the changes in. And... Um, and then you, you basically end up as if you're somehow the main uh, developer, somehow. So now, this is the thing that obviously surprised me, because now it says here that I'm, um, obviously because I, this is my repository, so it's hardly surprising that I've ended up with all the lines. But now if we go over to the original repository, which is the, so this isn't mine, this is the original repository, which is the other user's one. And then I go to the network graph. So this is, see, structural, not my repository. Um, so then I go to the network graph on their one. And then when you look on here, then as you see, I've still got most of those lines. And so I'm at the front. So, that, so all the lines that I took from um, the other users, even on the um, the other users' network graph, I, the lines are still there. So you'll come on here thinking, oh, it's well, obviously it's Structurug's, um sort of code. But then you look on here and say, oh, look, this PC zone has done a lot of work. It's, all this code is... Merged it all together, it must have taken a, a lot of effort, but basically, you saw what I did in order to do that. And so now, the one that I merged is at the top of the, um, uh, the top of the network graph, because I've just recently put it in, see, uh, 3rd of December. And so basically, that's, yeah, that's what this, um, quick, tu well, this tutorial was basically to show you is just how you can, basically take over the um sort of someone else's project or seemingly take over their projects on um GitHub. But obviously if it's a project which is busy, this you know stuff like this wouldn't happen. But it's mainly the ones which are a bit dormant when no one's really doing that much. And then you find that everything's like a mess and that's when you can come in and sort of clean stuff up a bit. And so now you've got a nice merged one that someone could download. And I've actually, what the other thing you're supposed to do is once you've done this merge, you should actually test it to make sure it works. But I have actually done this before and I've compiled this merge and it does actually work. 
So if someone actually wants to um, get this release 2.9 from sort of my, you know, from my repository, it, it, it does actually compile and you can actually make calls and the calls do work. So, you know, it's just the convenient thing is obviously all these other changes which were made have now been merged into this one. So what I've just done here is actually something which is of some use and it can actually help people. So anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And so um, I'll see if I can get any more sort of Git tutorials out. But basically this is just how you can take over a project on Git, especially if it's dormant, and make it seem like you've done, you know, done quite a bit of work to, you know, to, to get things going on it. Okay, see you.